Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to Breslev Web Seminar, Breslev Research Web Seminar. This is Pashas V.S. Hanan. And uh, all of us look forward to Pashas V.S. Hanan. It's called Shabbos Nachamu. The Haftorah of the week starts off Nachamu, Nachamu Ami. Be consoled, be consoled, my nation. Yomar Alekechem, Hashem says. So it's called Parshas Nachmu. It comes always after Dvarim and after Tishabov. Always. The sadness of Tishabov, the mourning of Tishabov, and the uh, sadness that comes about from the three weeks. It ends. Now we look forward to Nechoma, to consolation. And the Shulchan Aruch says there are seven weeks always between Tisha B'Av and Rosh Hashanah. There were always seven times Shabbos. Shabbos will fall seven times between Tisha B'Av and Rosh Hashanah. And during these seven weeks, we read Haftorahs from Yeshayahu, which all speak about the consolation of the Jewish nation after their long exile. So this is what Ve'eschanan is all about. Everybody looks forward to it. Oh, now the three weeks are over. Now we can have vacation. We can have barbecues. We can go to camp. We can go, or they go to camp anyway, whatever. We can go on vacation. We can go swimming. We can do all the things that we want to enjoy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You should do it, actually. You should enjoy life. Why not? All right? There's Yerushalmi that says, it talks about eating fruits, certain fruits and certain uh, different edibles. Yerushalmi says that a person who could have partaken of something good in this world and he denied himself because he thinks that's the way to serve Hashem, he's wrong. He's wrong. God will exact punishment from him for not taking advantage of the good things he could have had in this world. So go out and enjoy yourselves, but be careful. Be careful that we don't transgress. Be careful that we don't sin. There's a lot of ways to sin when you're on vacation. You're not in your same routine. You're not doing the same thing, getting up every morning at the same time, the same minion. You're not getting up to daven at that time. You're not getting up to work. There's a lot of things you can get up at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, great. But then you missed Zman Krishna. You missed the time of saying Krishna. Or you missed the time of davening. That's not so good. Actually, it's not good at all. And then you have many other things like that, you know. So what's important is know that it's Ve'ez Chanon. Know that it's Nachamu. Know that you can be consoled. Know that after the worst suffering and terrible tragedies that befell the Jewish nation, they're still here. The Jews are still here, and they're growing, and they're glowing, and they're still accomplishing and they're still building the world. This is what it is with the Jewish nation and Baruch Hashem. But how do we get there? Well, the Pasha starts off, the Eschanan El Hashem. I pleaded with Hashem. What's this all about? Moshe Rabbeinu, if you recall, a few uh, a couple of months ago, in Pasha's Chukas, was told to speak to the stone and it will give forth water. And Moshe Rabbeinu hit the stone instead of speaking to it. Hashem said, you didn't sanctify my name, therefore you cannot go into the land of Israel. And he was denied entry. Hashem took an oath that he won't let Moshe go into the land of Israel. And Moshe Rabbeinu was devastated by this. And the Medrash says, He wanted so much to go to the land, he says, let me go in as an animal. Let me go in as a bird. And Hashem said no. And uh, you got to ask a question. I mean, Moshe Rabbeinu, what was driving him? He had to get into the land of Israel, right? I mean, he's the greatest tzaddik of all times. He had the greatest reward waiting for him for his leadership, for what he did for the Jewish nation, how he put his neck on the line for them. What did it bother him? He had to get into the land. He wanted to fulfill the mitzvahs that are only possible to fulfill in the land, like tithes on the uh, 
uh, crops and so on. So Moshe Rabbeinu pleaded with Hashem. So what, what good would it be if he went in as an animal or a bird? He wouldn't be able to fulfill these mitzvahs anyway. What's he? No, he wanted the sanctity of the land of Israel. He wanted to have that sanctity on his record. This, the Talmud tells us, is an awesome thing. For a person to walk four cubits, which is about six feet, in the land of Israel, he's promised a portion in the world to come. Can you imagine that? And Moshe Rabbeinu wanted the sanctity of the land of Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. He wanted to get into the land of Israel, and therefore he prayed and prayed. The Gemara says he prayed 515 prayers. Tefillah, the word Hebrew word tefillah for prayer, tough is 400, pay is 80, lamed is 30, that's five, th uh, 510, and hey is five, it's 515. Moshe Rabbeinu perfected his prayers, 515 prayers, tefillah, in order to enter the land. Hashem said no. Enough. Don't talk to me anymore about it. That's it. The Zohar says that Moshe had to be buried outside the land because when Moshe Rabbeinu gets up for the resurrection when Mashiach comes, he's going to have to come from the diaspora to the land of Israel. Moshe never left his people. He never left them behind so that he will make sure that every Jew gets to the land of Israel and no Jew shall be left behind. So that's why Moshe Rabbeinu had to be buried outside the land of Israel. But it goes further than that. Moshe Rabbeinu has to stand on high. He didn't exactly get the 100% what he wanted, so he's still constantly praying for himself. And Moshe Rabbeinu never thought of himself without thinking of the Jewish nation. So for all these years, he's standing there before Hashem and praying to Hashem, please help my children, bring them back to you, give them fear of heaven, give them good health, give them parnosa, give them everything that they need. Moshe Rabbeinu is still batting for, battling for us. So this is something that we have to remember. The parsha is starting off the Tzor is passed, Tisha B'Av is gone. But it's only gone because we have people like Moshe Rabbeinu, another very great tzaddikim, who are battling on high for us, and they go to bat for us all the time in order to make our lives better. The Pasha goes through quite a few different things, a few different concepts. We'll skip a little bit. In the middle of the Pasha, you have the Ten Commandments. Again, a review of the Ten Commandments, and they're written here slightly different than they are in Parshas Yisroi, which is uh, Exodus 20. They're written, there's slight differences between them, but the point is that this one starts off, Shomer es Yom HaShabbos Lekatshoi, guard the Shabbos and observe it. In Yisroi it says, Zohar es Yom HaShabbos, remember the Shabbos. Here it says, God, there it says, remember, right? We say Friday night in Lachodoidi Zoho Vishomo Bedibu Echot. Right? Everything was said by Hashem. Both these commandments and the ones earlier were all said at the same time by Hashem in one word. One word. He encompassed everything. One word. Now, by Hashem, that's possible. Hashem could say a million words, 12, 20 million, two words, 60 million, 700 billion words, doesn't matter. By Hashem, there's no such thing as nature as we know it, but by us. So we hear two things, Zohar and Shomer. Remember and guard, right? And we heard both of them. At Sinai, the Jews heard both words, right? Because you have to know at all times, you can remember something and you can't, uh, you know, guard yourself against something else. You can't do it. There's a lot of things we could accomplish. And one of the things that the Torah tells us to go further is near the end of the Parsha, 
we say the Shema. The Shema is written there. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Bechod. Here, Israel, God is one. Right? Reb Nosson explains that here, O Israel, Hashem is one. That's the, that's the declaration of faith. Here, O Israel. Why do you need... Uh, you need Shema, uh, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Bechod is our declaration. Why do you need the word Shema Yisrael? Just say Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. God is one. All right? Rabbi Nosson explains that the Shema Yisrael, Shema means listen. Really, listen up. All right? You ever hear the expression, listen up, guys? That's what Moshe Rabbeinu was saying to the Jews. Listen up, guys. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Why do you have to listen up? Because you have to make sure that you really, really listen. If you say Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, then you will find that Hashem Elokeinu is Hashem Echad. He really is the one God. He is the one who directs the world. He is the one who takes the whole world under his watchful eye. And God willing, we will be merit to see that, to understand it, and believe in it. And we'll see the coming of Mashiach and the building of the temple speedily in our days. Amen.